Our first story introduces us to two ladies on horseback and a situation which any of us might face as we, in our way, ride along. It's amusing. Here is H. H. Monroe's story, Esme. They say that all hunting stories are the same, but my hunting story isn't a bit like any you've ever heard. It happened quite a while ago. All the usual crowd were at the meet, especially Constance Broder. Constance is one of those strapping, florid girls that go well with autumn scenery or Christmas decorations in church. I have a presentiment that something dreadful is going to happen. Am, am I looking pale? Oh, you're looking nicer than usual. But that's so easy for you, dear. Constance and I were well mounted and we had no difficulty in keeping ourselves in the first flight, though it was a fairly stiff run. Towards the finish, however, we must have held rather too independent a line, for we lost the hounds and found ourselves plodding aimlessly along miles from anywhere. It was fairly exasperating, and my temper was beginning to let itself go by inches, when suddenly... There they go at last! But what, what in heaven's name are they hunting? Well, apparently it's not a fox. No mortal fox. It's twice as high. And what an ugly small head. And its neck. Enormous and thick. It's a hyena. That's what it is. It must have escaped from Lord Pabham's park. A hyena? Yes, and it's probably tame. Look, the dogs don't know what to do about it. Oh, dear. They're running off. The hyena hailed our approach with unmistakable relief and demonstrations of friendliness. What are we to do? It's getting dark. What a person you are for questions, my dear. Well, well we can't stay here all night with a hyena. I shouldn't think of staying here all night, even without a hyena. We had better make for that ridge of trees to the right. I imagine the highway is just beyond. I hope it is. What on earth are we to do with the hyena? What does one generally do with hyenas? Well, I, I've never had anything to do with one before. Well, neither have I. If we knew its sex, we might give it a name. Perhaps we might call it Esme. That would do in either case. Esme? Here, Esme! Come along! Come along! There, there must be a gypsy encampment nearby. Gypsies? Why do you say that? We just, just passed a baby, a half-naked gypsy brat. What was he doing there? Picking blackberries, obviously. There. Esme has probably frightened it. Esme? Esme? Come along here. Esme? What have you got there? Esme? Esme? Put down that baby. Esme? Merciful heavens, Baroness. What on earth shall we do? What are we to do? Constance. I am perfectly certain that at the last judgment you will ask more questions than the examining seraphs. Esme, down! Down, Esme! Can't we do something? Esme, if you don't put that baby down, I'll thrash you with this whip. It's, it's running off with the baby into the bushes. Esme! Esme! Well, Constance, 
I really don't know what more I can do. We'd best get along. Esme can catch up. Come along. Do you think the poor little thing suffered much? Well, the indications were all that way, my dear. Ah, we are saved. There's the highway. Where? Up ahead. Didn't you hear the car? There. There. There's another. Ah, here comes Esme. There, Esme. Naughty. You're a naughty hyena. How can you let that ravening beast trot by your side? Oh, dear. What is it? What is it hanging from his mouth? I can't quite tell, dear. Now, now, pay attention. There's the road ahead. Don't run ahead, Esme. The cars won't be able to see you at this hour. Esme, hold. Stay with us. Oh, oh the silly animal. Well, I don't think we should worry about that beast. No, I dare say he can fend for himself. <coughs> oh, Esme, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Ladies, ladies, is this... Was this your dog? I'm, I'm dreadfully oh, sorry. You, I'm you, you, you have killed my Esme. <laughs> I'm so awfully sorry. I, I, oh. I keep dogs myself, so, so I know what you must feel about it. I, I'll do anything I can in reparation, anything please, at all. Please bury him at once. Oh, that yes. much I think I may ask certainly, of you. Certainly, certainly, at, at once, madam. William, William, bring the spade. No, the spade, William. Uh, I saw. What a magnificent fellow. I'm afraid he must have been rather a valuable animal. Well, he took second in the puppy class at oh. Birmingham last year. Oh. oh! Don't cry, dear. It was all over in a moment, I'm sure. He couldn't have suffered much. Oh, oh look here. You you simply must let me do something in, in, in reparation. I couldn't think oh, of but, it. Oh, but I insist. No, no, no I insist. I couldn't think of it. But as he persisted, I let him have my address. Lord Pebble never advertised the loss of his hyena when a strictly fruit-eating animal strayed from his park a, a year or two previously. He was called upon to give compensation in 11 cases of sheep worrying and practically to restock his neighbor's poultry guards. And an escaped hyena would have mounted up to something on the scale of a governmental grant. The gypsies were equally unobtrusive over their missing offspring. I don't suppose in large encampments they really know to a child or two how many they've got. There was a sequel to the adventure, though. I got through the post a charming little diamond brooch with the name Esme set in a sprig of rosemary. Incidentally, too, I lost the friendship of Constance Brodel. You see, when I sold the brooch, I, I quite properly refused to give her any share of the proceeds. I pointed out that the Esme part of the affair was my own invention, and the hyena part of it belonged to Lord Pabham, if it really was his hyena, of which, of course, I've no proof. <laughs> that was Esme by Saki. Pat Franklin played both ladies and the gypsy brat. Bernard Mays played the motorist. And the hyena came to us through the courtesy of Lord Pabham, if it was his hyena. <laughs>